My friend is like totally going to kill me. I'm always late. We were supposed to study at 11 and now it's half past 11. So I really need to hurry or she's going to kill me. This is going to be a kind of a first impressions video. I'm going to do my makeup as I normally do it, like on a day-to-day -day basis, but I'm going to incorporate like some new products that I haven't tried before and let you know what I think, like what my first impressions are. Don't forget to follow me on my new Instagram, Beauty by Diana, if you haven't already, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't and if you like my videos. Let's get started. As I said in the intro, I'm going to do my makeup as usual, like my daytime makeup. Uh, but I'm going to incorporate new products for the like first impression part So I'm just going to prime as usual with my MIS Moisturizing facial mist and this is not really a primer It's just a moisturizing mist and then I'm going to use my makeup diamond heart base primer And I'm just going to apply this primer with my Sigma F88 flat angled kabuki brush the first product I'm doing a first impression on um, in this video is this makeup sponge from the brand Nika K. And to have something to compare it to, I'm going to use my beauty blender on one side of my face and the Nika K sponge on the other side. Uh, this is the sponge I normally use and I love it. This is a new one, a fresh one. You never know how like jacked up your old sponge is until you buy a new one. So right off the bat I can feel like a big texture difference in these sponges. I dampen both of them. The Nika K sponge is much more dense and kind of hard and I don't know if I'm going to like it but I'm not gonna judge until I try it. And the Beauty Blender is a lot squishier and softer and this one increased quite a bit in size when I dampen it but this one didn't so yeah I'm just going to apply my Maybelline Pure Liquid Mineral Foundation in the shade Ivory because I'm pretty white right now, using the Nika K sponge on this side and the Beauty Blender on the other side. Yeah, I can feel, like I said, that this Nika K sponge is much more dense. It's not unpleasant, it just, you know, it, it isn't like super soft or anything. I mean, it's applying the foundation. I'm just going to finish up and then I'm going to do this face with the Beauty Blender and I'll get back with like my comparison. Okay, so after applying uh, my foundation with the Nika K sponge on this side and with the Beauty Blender on this side, I can tell you that this sponge like ate up a lot more of my product. I had to use double the amount of foundation on this side, I just didn't film it. Uh, and with the Beauty Blender, I almost felt like I took too much like the first with the first application. So I mean this Nika K sponge is 69 Swedish crowns and this one is 199. So it's quite a big like price difference, but I still like after the first impression I it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be because <laughs> I was like terrified. I'm like, "Oh my god, it's so hard." But like it it applied my foundation good it doesn't look bad or anything but I feel like I need to double the product and as you can see like it didn't cover up anything it just like evened out my skin tone on this side which on this side it looks like it has a little bit more coverage so not a complete mess but I definitely prefer the original beauty blender I'm also going to apply my, my concealer with the sponges and I'm going to use the Maybelline Fit Me concealer in the shade 15 and I'm using this concealer to uh, cover up my dark circles and the redness around my nose but also like kind of highlighting with it like on my chin and a little bit on my nose and forehead so I'm going to use this pointed side on the Nika K sponge on this side and then the pointed side of the beauty blender on this side So if I look at it like closely, both sides look good, I mean, it all looks blended and yeah, but like I said with the foundation, it just feels like the Nika K sponge isn't covering as much, like I still see some redness on some, because I have really sensitive skin right now, I don't know what, I've had it for like the past six months or something, my skin just 
super sensitive so I get like itchy little dots sometimes on my face because I react to a product or something but yeah as I said the Nika K sponge didn't cover that but the beauty blender sponge did so I feel like as I said with the foundation this eats up a lot more product as you can tell but uh, yeah the beauty blender you need less product and it covers I mean it makes the foundation and concealer cover a little bit more. Now I'm just going to set my concealer and foundation with some powder and I have all my like face powders and stuff in this extra large uh, Z palette but I'm going to use my Fit Me uh, powder in the shade 120 Classic Ivory. Now on to cheeks and as usual I'm going to highlight first and the reason I do that is just I think it looks better and it melts in with, uh, better with the blush and stuff, but I'm going to do a first impression on this uh, Makeup Revolution highlighting palette and the packaging looks like this. I love it. And then if I can get it out, <laughs> the palette looks like this. I think it's super sleek, especially for the price point. This palette was 119 Swedish crowns, so I think that the packaging is top notch for that price. And the three shades in here look like this. Whoop, totally forgot to take out that plastic thing. Yeah, so the three shades look like this. There's a like whitish gold, which is the one I'm going to use today. And then there's a more peach, uh, peachy highlight. And then a more like pinky purple highlight. But I'm going to use my Real Techniques uh, setting brush. Uh, and I'm going to go in with that like whitish gold shade and I haven't even swatched these so this is going to be pretty exciting. Normally I use my Mary Luminizer from the Balm which is a little bit more like champagne-y. I don't know if you can see that but I think that's really pretty. Like it's not a, as intense as the Mary Luminizer could because that highlighter is like intense, but it's super pretty and this is a bit more goldeny uh, and the Mary Lou is, like I said, more champagne-y. Like I hope you can tell it's beautiful and I can imagine that this looks great on a variety of skin tones. I've seen it swatched on... Uh, like in pictures on different girls and it looks amazing. Yeah, I really like this one. It doesn't look powdery at all. It just looks like It's like I don't know like it's my skin just glowing and then I'm going to use uh, as usual my Contour powder and it's the middle shade from the Anastasia contour kit. I believe it's called Fawn and I'm just going to use it with my Zoeva 109 Luxe face paint. It looks like this. I'm sorry I haven't washed my brushes. I really love this brush for contouring. I'm also going to contour my nose with this shade but that takes quite some time and I want to like focus on the first impression part in this video so I'm just going to fast forward this part. I'm also sweeping this a little bit on my forehead just to like even out the coloring. And for the last part of my cheeks I'm going to do one more first impression of a Makeup Revolution palette. And this one is the blush palette that's called... what are you called? Sugar and Spice. And also here I love the packaging. It looks really really similar to the highlight palette. And as I said before I love it. It's so sleek. And this palette with... I didn't even say how many like shades there were in here. Uh, it's eight shades. Two are more of like, I don't know, natural blushes. And then you have your four like normal blushes, a highlighter and like a super shimmery marble blush. I also have to say I love that these palettes have this huge mirror like Great job on the packaging Makeup Revolution. Today I think I'm going to use this shade down here and I'm going into this blush down here and as I said like with the highlight palette I haven't even swatched this so yeah it's a true first impression wow that's super pigmented like I did not expect that because as you saw I shook it off 
but like, whoa, that's really pigmented. Like, I'm definitely going to tone this down with a little bit of powder, because right now I look like, like a joke. But I just wanted to, like, show you and tell you that on this side, the blush went on a lot smoother and not as, like, patchy as this side. I don't know if you can tell, but it's like a blotch of blush right there. And, yeah, I don't know if it's because of that I used the Nika K sponge to apply, like, foundation on this side. I, I don't know, maybe... Or maybe it's just I use more product, I don't know. I'm really like impressed and shocked over how pigmented this was. But yeah, I'm just going back to my powder brush and just sweeping it over the blush so it's not as intense. Yeah, now it looks a lot better. So yeah, definitely super pigmented. And as I said, that palette is 129 Swedish crowns and that's like nothing that's usually usually what you pay for one like compact and here you get eight shades so yeah if you want me to do a more in-depth review of the two palettes like the blush palette and the highlight palette definitely comment and I will get back to you on that one and as usual when I'm done with all the powders on my face I'm going back to the moisturizing mist from Emma S and just spritzing it all over my face so like if there's any powdery finish it goes away also when my face is still a little bit like damp from this mist I like to go in with this spoolie type brush and just comb through my brows because when they're still a little bit damp I feel like I can get out like mostly of the powder from my brows I usually never fill in my brows because yeah I just never felt like I needed it and now I've bought the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Wiz because I feel like sometimes, especially in pictures, like makeup pictures, you can see that like right here I'm missing a little little bit of like hairs. So I just bought that brow definer so that I can, no sorry, the Brow Wiz, uh, so that I can fill in like those sparse areas. So nothing crazy. So here's the Brow Wiz and in Sweden this is 235 crowns and I bought it in medium brown because I felt like that was the closest to my hair color and whoa shit totally dropped that on the floor I bought the medium brown just because I felt like it was the most ashy of the browns I sometimes feel like brow products can be a little bit red and I don't like that on myself I'm sure like all of you have seen this and try this I'm so late but as I said I usually don't fill in my brows so on one side you have this super super thin uh, twist up pencil and on the other side Oh my god, that just totally like dropped out of the packaging. That sucks, like look, it just fell out. Damn, that sucks. As I was trying to say, on the other side there's a spoolie. And yeah, I'm not going to return it because nobody got time for that. <laughs> I'm just going to fill in these sparse areas right here. Now I'm just going to go in with the spoolie side because I feel like it's a little bit too sharp right here. <laughs> so yeah, just brushing it through to make it appear more natural. The sun is like right up in my face right now. <laughs> but yeah, I hope you can see because I really can't see the viewfinder on my camera. Uh, I couldn't have chosen a better color. I'm just not sure if I'm used to seeing myself like with fill-in brows. Something I always do even when I don't fill in my brows is I use some brow gel and this is my favorite one it's from a Finnish brand called Lum Lumine it, it's their blueberry eyebrow fixing gel so I'm just going to run that through my brows because if I don't use brow gel I kind of look like Wolverine in X-Men isn't he the one that has like these crazy bushy brows? So the last product I'm going to do a first impression on in this video is the Tweezerman eyelash curler and it's called the Pro Curl Lash Curler. Like, I've used the same freaking eyelash curler, like, since I started doing my makeup. It's really, like, nasty looking. I've just, like, changed the squishy pad. <laughs> but yeah, I've seen really great reviews on this one, and I just wanted to see if it makes a difference. And this was hella expensive. <laughs> like, I believe this was, like, 
280 crowns or something and you can buy eyelash curlers for 50 crowns in Sweden so yeah uh, but this is what it looks like it's like rose gold and super pretty wow that really like pinches the lashes oh yeah that sounded like really creepy oh yeah <laughs> like I'm going in again because I was kind of afraid to a pinch really hard right now because I can feel I love that it's like resistance on my other one I can like these two handles can touch each other because I need to pinch so hard but with this one pinches right away you don't have to like do anything so this is the eye where I have curled the lashes and this eye is where I haven't so for me curling lashes makes a huge difference so yeah so far I really like it I just finished off my makeup by throwing on uh, my Isadora brow lifter in my waterline and it's like a nude liner and my uh, Lancome Hypnose Doll Eyes Waterproof Mascara just one coat and I applied my MAC lipstick in faux on my lips and yeah that's it for this video I hope you liked it and that you could understand my English and yeah like for the most part it was kind of good impressions the only thing was that the actual product like flew out of my Anastasia brow wiz but yeah for the most part I like the product so if you have tried any of them and you don't agree with me or you do please leave a comment down below and yeah I hope to see you next time bye